The internet has proven time and time again that Fallout New Vegas can be played in a near infinite amount of ways. You can play as a suit mutant, an assassin with the name of a number, or as someone who hates their life. But what if you wanted to be an illegal business owner? Sure, you can install mods to make it happen, but can you actually do it in the base game? Could you find the resources to develop a thriving system of trading and manufacturing? Can you beat Fallout New Vegas as Walter White for Breaking Bad? If you were anything like me, you read that the first time and thought, what does that even mean? What would you do? Given that this is uncharted territory, I put a few rules of my own together, and will share them with you now. No using chems. This also extends from anything from medics to super stem packs. Healing will be done through doctors, other consumables, or drowning myself at a water fountain. Doctor's bags are allowed, as it is never specified what their contents are. This rule is of course reference to Walter never consuming his own product. I will need to prepare 25 turbo before the end of the game. This will act as our crystal and our supply for this run. It is an arbitrary number that I selected. I'll need to interact with 5 factions that would purchase turbo. To be able to sell turbo, I'll need to be in good standing with a faction, and they would have to have some use for it. It may seem pretty obvious, but I'll need to look the part as well. While this doesn't seem like that big of a deal at first, you'll find out pretty quickly that this was the bane of my existence. With all that out of the way, let's crank this one out. I originally wanted to say that I got my ass out of bed and have the scene where Walter is naked when I said ass, but alas, I fear the big D. After telling the doc what my name is, I doll myself up to look like a high school chemistry teacher and take a jaunt over to the customization station. A high intelligence and perception explains why he's able to produce the best substance, and a low strength and agility is explained by his old age and radiation therapy. Sitting down on his couch, I'm reminded of a scene in a movie I once watched, before selecting barter, repair, and science for my tag skills. Four eyes and skilled were selected for our traits, and hardcore mode was enabled. We also played on very hard for this challenge. I did want to stay somewhat true to the weapons that Mr. White uses in the series, so I dropped off almost all the items that comes in the packs that you start with. Sure, I could have sold these, but I like to apply as many restraints to myself as possible. I actually managed to put together Walter's outfit almost immediately. It isn't perfect, but it gets the message across pretty well in my opinion. I do a little trading with Chet before hitting the road and looking like a badass while doing so. I grab some supplies at Jeans before pushing through Hidden Valley and Black Mountain like the femboy that I am. At least this time I'm not misraced like I was when I was a suit mutant. This is a dangerous place, human, especially for your kind. I bought a few rounds at the 188 trading post, as well as some supplies at the Grub and Gold. While grabbing the sacred combat armor, some boys offered a golden shower. I accepted their apple juice before running into town and seeing what the local dealers were producing. At the Mormon Fort, I found a lab that I could work out of and analyze the product. Just as I thought, the quality is worse than the time that I found an escort online for $10 an hour. I help the followers inside Freeside for a few reasons. They have a lab, know the area well, and may have a need for my product. Turbo, non-canonly, can be utilized for reducing anxiety, a common issue in the wasteland. I speak with James and Julie, allowing a business agreement of sorts to provide the followers with extra supplies. The king seemed like a decent enough guy to get into business with. Perhaps he could distribute the product to his men or the rest of Freeside. I threw a grenade right between the cheeks of a guy who lies on his coding resume before shooting the king multiple times for making me walk up the three-story maze that is his building. I then hang out with a more perceptionate version of my younger self after reloading a save. I steal a key from someone I don't want to guard my collection of My Little Pony merchandise, and talk to the same woman twice for two different reasons. The king is delighted that we're able to resolve the conflicts peacefully, so he gave me enough experience to level up three times. Speech, repair, and science were increased, but I also grabbed the comprehension perk. Now at level 5, I put down Dixon so that I could declare this as my territory. I grabbed a swig so long that I have time to thank all of you for your support. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys are digging the videos. I also really like reading all the comments that confirm that I'm a bottom. Heading back to the good old town of Good Springs, I shoot some bottles with Sunny and talk with Joe Cobb before getting my collar yanked to Boulder City. I have one of those black ones with a little metal ring in front of it, and I absolutely love it. Leveling up after talking with Jessup, I further improve my science and speech before grabbing the Gunslinger perk. I normally never grab perks that affect vats, because I don't like it much, but I've been trying to use it a little bit more with how effective it seemed when suffering through the glory hole that was dust. Over at Black Mountain, I sneak around the side, do the devious action of getting through the fence via the door, repair a device a little bit more advanced than my blow up doll, and get appreciation for my actions. This really doesn't have any relation to Breaking Bad, but I need experience if I'm going to be even half the man that Walter is. After grabbing more speech and the sneering Imperialist perk, I hail back up at Doc Mitchell's place, grab some ammo at Vendertron, 
and take the long walk to Red Rock Canyon. I was actually impressed with how well the outfit came together. New Vegas definitely doesn't have the best character creation method, but it definitely did the job here. The cons became a great resource for me. Originally, I had planned to take them out, but I decided to divide the territory up and let them do business with the fiends. I teach Jack a few recipes, kill Ringo, no, these clips aren't out of order, yes, I am on illicit drugs, watch the battle at Good Springs, kill Doc Mitchell in his own home with a pistol he returned to me, and stop Malcolm Holmes before he even had a chance to talk with me. I love that the direction he came from implies that he traveled south from Bonnie Springs. Dude's a legend. Good thing I'm into necrophilia. The next logical thing for me to do was to go kill the Lonesome Drifter for his unique Magnum condom and beat No Bark in a game of Caravan. I'm not going to say no to someone willing to hand me a thousand caps. I do the same thing with Cliff and Novak before buying supplies, running away from a demented version of Snuffles, and seeing our friend Anders. Dan is pretty pleased with my initiative in the bedroom. That isn't even a joke, my computer is literally in my bedroom. So she tells me to drop off a few juicy packages. The first package goes off without a hitch, but the second one needs to be dropped off to Motor Runner. Up until this point, I hadn't really faced a whole lot of adversity. Combat was primarily done by others, and I just watched like many of my sexual encounters. The fiends, however, were rougher than the time that I tried to use a couple sponges and a rubber glove. I died so many times just trying to make it to the door that I really felt like I was in the Amazon position, but after suffering through for a bit, I managed to get to the pimp that I was looking for. Motor Runner accepted the packages of saltine crackers, and I fear for what he will do with them. Dawes over at the NCRF welcomed me with rather warm and sweaty arms, so I decided to instead talk with Eddie. Eddie being a businessman, he's willing to do a little bit of distribution for me if I'm willing to help him out. I agree, and before I know it, I'm on my way to yell at someone who is trying to abduct people and put them in an underground fight arena. Who is the champion, you ask? Ronald McDonald! Those of you who are afraid of clowns, did you get scared there? I'm genuinely curious. After pointing at dude looking for clowns in the right direction, I make my way to Prim. Using only 10% of my power, I disarm the three landmines on the bridge between the two sides of the town before talking with a guy from Idaho about the NCR's plan. He tells me details that eliminates my thirst, so I head back to Eddie to reveal that the NCR is going to attack, only to find out that the NCR is already attacking. I never realized how goofy the Powder Ganger's quests really are, but now I have no regrets for skipping over them as many times as I have. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so we're going to kick it into a speed faster than my you-know-what machine. I talk with a dominant woman guarding Helios, find out that she already has the whole research team in Chastity, use Amazon on the computers in the solar yard to order myself a smaller cage, murder a few dogs while reframing from the topic of bestiality, utilize a medieval torture device for pleasure, and spread my knowledge of feminization all over Reddit. After doing that quest for the 43rd time and still enjoying it, I make my way to the strip. Hey there, friend. A bit of advice. You look like you could use some protection. It doesn't take very long for me to get distracted, but eventually I snap out of it and get to work. Dealing with Benny becomes the primary objective. Walter isn't one to let bygones be bygones. I talk with Swank and manage to convince him to get Benny to head off to his room before giving him a shot so high in alcohol content that he falls off his chair. At level 10, I grab Speech and the terrifying presence perk. I really feel like this perk would have fit Walter so well, but I didn't use it a single time this whole run. You don't need to be too disappointed in me, my mom already is. I head to the north of Vegas in hopes of getting my hands on a new weapon. By passing a 55 speech check, you can get your hands on Vance's machine gun. It's an okay weapon, but definitely not one of my favorites. I started making my way through Yes Man's main quest in hopes of getting an independent Vegas. This would allow me to open up trade routes for my business as much as I wanted. Despite Kaiser looking rather attractive today, I decided to push my way through the bunker and all the robots to power up the army. This did prove a little tricky at some points not being able to use stim packs, but really not too bad for wearing nothing more than a skirt. I did really want to kill the legion here, but our weaponry wasn't quite up to snuff at this point, so I decided to stay up past my bedtime and play caravan until I had enough caps for the rest of the run. I used my abilities as a nerd to break into House's super top secret terminal and have a peaceful conversation with him. I gotta spice things up instead of killing him every- oh well I guess that's- that's fine too. Gamora bartenders frequently sell Turbo. Asking Kachino if he's in need of more supply reveals that there are some issues around these parts. He said that he'd be willing to distribute on the off chance that I was able to help him out with his problems. I find some rather interesting material from Christian Bale's collection and present it to Clandon. Press it. Very nice. Mm. Let's see Paul Allen's card. 
He started sweating profusely and said that he needs to turn in some tapes, so I just awkwardly did the grapevine out of the room. Jason Statham told me that there were some guns that needed to be destroyed, so I pulled the Shiloh buff on him and told him to just do it. I trick Morpheus into hating Neo, so he opens fire, allowing me to get my bones riddled with arthritis a moment to loosen up before putting Big Style out of business. Talking with Kachino after the fact reveals that I have a new buyer. I used a few bullets to kill George. Pretty sure he isn't going to wet an open casket after that turmoil. I wanted to originally just kill all the boomers, but they honestly proved to be pretty challenging, so I cut myself a break, I vowed to not fail No Nut November, and moved on with my life without any hard feelings whatsoever. Using my intelligence from all those years of teaching idiots, I tell some robots some random numbers and ice cream before getting the holiday for the Brotherhood. I really don't think I needed this, but Repcon headquarters is always a bit of fun until someone gets hurt. I'm gonna come clean here and confess that I haven't finished Breaking Bad. As my main hobby has shifted to video creation, my consumption has gone down quite a bit. Before this period of my life, I did manage to get to Season 3, Episode 5. In Breaking Bad, Walter uses a bike lock, poison gas, and a few different types of guns. While we aren't using the exact armaments that he used, there is a part in the show that I haven't got to yet that he uses a remote-controlled automatic machine gun in the back of a vehicle to kill a bunch of guys. If you've been paying attention to the video and have played New Vegas a few times, you'll know exactly what weapon I'm going to be using that will act as that weapon. After a bunch of walking, restocking the Great Khan's armory, and visiting a representation of my true self, I kill several centaurs over the span of a few minutes. There was the time in my life that I was dating a girl who was really into horses. For most moderately intelligent individuals, there's a red flag as big as Russia. Me being the blind person that I am, and her being the most beautiful blonde that I've ever laid eyes on, I stuck around to find out how she was in the bedroom. When I tell you that I'm super kinky, I'm super kinky. This girl was more crazy than Hannibal Lecter. One of the things that she really liked to do was dress up as a horse. She would wear a latex horse mask, a plug with this beautiful black hair coming off the back, and this massive strap on. Without getting into too much detail, let's just say that I definitely like horses a little bit more than I should. Grabbing the Avenger, I go to Good Spring Source to drink my weight in gold. I really prefer having high survival, but this run just didn't allow for it, unfortunately. One of the best parts about Breaking Bad, in my opinion, is the relationship between Walter and Jesse. It was really cool to be able to see it develop so much, and I look forward to finishing the rest of the show for that reason. Unfortunately, there really isn't a Jesse in Fallout New Vegas, but there is someone who is fit enough for the job, Arcade. He makes frequent comments on how he would appreciate medics, and even looks like a consumer of various substances. Adding him to my team with a simple speech check, I dropped off some medical supplies to Julie so that I could get access to her magazines. If I was going to rely on Freeside as one of my five distributors, I was going to need to kick it into shape. The most logical way of doing so was helping the Gretts with their staff shortages. Old Ben and Beatrix were more than willing to join the team, but we needed something with a little bit of extra spice. I really feel like Eddie would have been a good fit here, but it turns out that Ralph has some information about another robot. I followed the trail like a hound on the hunt for period blood, killing any rats with a massive minigun. Why are many guns called miniguns if they are so voluptuous? I utilized Fisto before sending him off to Garrett's and reporting to James about the good news. The Brotherhood in New Vegas can be a little bit of a drag and really isn't a highlight for this run, so let's do a few jumps here. I grab the other two holotapes, immediately realize that the Brotherhood are my kind of people as I'm forced to strip down, tell Dobson to go to Burger King for the 2 for 5 deal, inform McNamara about my exploitation of a man's stomach, talk to the soon-to-be leader of the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood, do random tasks around the bunker that really encourage books to make a comeback. Speaking about books, have you read any good ones recently? Let a guy with really bad anger issues into a place that I got hired to stand next to menacingly, got ragdoll harder than me in the bedroom, and killed Simon for being disappointed in me. This route is quick and allows me to become a member of the Brotherhood. While they haven't utilized Turbo to my knowledge, I could really see them liking it for use as a combat drug. I put the Avenger to mediocre use as I tore through enemies that I should have fought 11 levels ago before getting my stuff prepared to the Mojave Outpost. Major Knight is always good for his 100% repair ability. It's expensive, but worth it in the long run. I do have to buy some hats to repair mine at the Crimson Caravan because the Brotherhood felt like getting me naked. Returning to Yes Man at the Lucky 38, I watched the demonstration again. I really need to do the NCR or Legion run next time to completely avoid the stupidity. I managed, to save the pre I managed to save the president again before murdering a bunch of people in the power station and clicking a few buttons with my tongue. That's one disadvantage about two-handed weapons. If you watch this far, chances are you like my videos. That's great to hear, but you're probably thinking something along the lines of, didn't you say something about getting 25 turbo? My dear viewer, you'd be correct. Now that we have the demand from our five factions, followers, powder gangers, 
Freeside, Brotherhood, and Gamora, we can start gathering our supplies. Turbo can be crafted after receiving the recipe from Diane during the Abba Abba honeymoon quest. The materials needed are one Brock flower, one jet, one turpentine, and one Kazdor poison gland. Let's get started with the Brock flower. Unironically, Brock flower cave has the most abundant supply. The cave just outside of Good Springs also has a lot. Once we get 25 of those, we start collecting our next ingredient. Jet is sold at a couple places, so we just kind of hop between the shops and wait around for a bit until we get all we need. I use Jack, the bartenders at Gamora, the toilet in Boulder City, and the sergeant in Camp McCarran to get the 25 we needed. Next up is Turpentine. There is supposedly 22 in Repcon outside of Novak, but I didn't open up the Gek to confirm or to find all of them, so after murdering a ghoul, I walk away with a whopping 7. Camp Forlorn does have a few jugs of Turpentine in the main tent, but I had to go to the North Gold Mine and Searchlight and Gamora Sweets for some more. After crossing that one off the list, that leaves just one more. Cazador Poison Glands. If I felt like adding an additional 2-3 hours to the 16 hour long playthrough, I would have gone to Big Mountain because I always seem to find a crap ton there. Instead, I went down by the bay, over by the Remnants Bunker, and just north of Good Springs near the Tribal Camp. This took so long. I really didn't even have enough supplies to be attacking Cazadors, but I was so close to being done with the shipment that I pushed through. After dying more times than I really care to admit, I make my way back to Mormon Fort to make some crystal. Jesse and I spent days locked in this tiny room, making the finest turbo the wasteland has ever seen. After numerous hours of being in a stuffy suit, we walk outside and craft it at a fire pit. We're all role players here, suck it up and deal with it. Just make sure you swallow. After all that, we need to make our deliveries. The king told me to drop it off to one of his undercover men. Kachino just told me to leave it on the counter so the bartenders would grab it. Julie said that the table near the gate would work just fine. After a bit of bloodbath, Hannigan said that the desk in Eddie's old room would suffice. And the Brotherhood said that the supply box near the front door would be the best for ease of access. I really like skirts. After all of our deliveries were made, I prepared for the next battle. I know some of you might be disappointed that I didn't use the aforementioned mod that adds a substance to the game. But after trying it out, it really seemed like it wasn't finished, so I opted to avoid it. With that out of the way, there is one more thing we didn't do. Remember how Anders was tied up on the cross by the Legion for running supplies? Well, this is my territory. I should be able to do whatever I want. While I murder a crap ton of people wearing red loincloths, why don't we talk about a hiking trip I went on a few years ago? Hiking, to me, is a great way to test your physical abilities and disconnect from technology. As a society, we have started using technology in our everyday lives, but it is important to occasionally step back from the blue light and watch leaves dance around. I could be your daddy, but I'm not your mom, so I'll avoid patronizing you. Anyways, the hike was beautiful. Ascending and descending portions, twists and turns, and beautiful flowers and plants. Coming to a three-way intersection, I stop and check out the signs. One of the drawing factors of going to that specific trail for me was this massive waterfall over top of a recession in the cliff wall. The few pictures that I had seen of it online were fantastic, and one of my uncles recommended I check it out. After heading right at the intersection, I followed the trail a little bit further. Given how the waterfall was positioned, this was a large decline with chunks of wood acting as steps. Eventually, I got to the bottom, and just had to cross a few more streams to get to the spot I was so eager to reach. A few janky wooden boards were crossed, and eventually the small rise in the land flattened just a little, and I had reached this giant overhang. It was beautiful. Water rushed down in a smaller trickle than expected due to it being in the middle of summer, but the moss on the walls gives a sense of airiness that made up for it. As I walked a little further and readied my camera, the ridge that I was on faded, and I finally saw what I had heard. The water forming in a small pool, dozens of people wading around in the water, and children laughing. Even now, just thinking about it makes me smile and get a slight tear to my eye. Here I was with my camera and water bag, down there for a picture of this waterfall and I got something else entirely. I put the camera down, sat down on a rotten log, and admired the beauty of the situation for several minutes before following the same trail up, past the janky boards and wooden steps. It's funny how many times in our lives we think that the ending of our journey is one thing, when it actually ends up being something else entirely. At first I was disappointed by the crowd, but then I saw the beauty of it. Don't be so caught up in your own thoughts that you don't enjoy the journey or a change in outcome. There is so much to be had in life. Enjoy it. Any hoosies, after murdering Kaiser and stocking up on supplies, I went to Yes Man to start the Battle of Hoover Dam. This was brutal. 
If at any point an enemy focused fire on me, I die within three shots. I let Jesse, the bot, and the NCR do most of the work. Roughly about halfway through, I checked my game stats to see where we were at on the whole no chem and stem pack thing. At some point, I must have used a healing powder and didn't think much about it. Apparently, they actually count as chems. I reloaded several saves to find out where this mistake happened, and found that it was roughly in the middle of the battle at the fort. I was so pissed at this point. Both of these areas were tough without having any armor, even with high DPS. I sped through killing the legion before making my way back to the dam. Plugging in Yes Man to every Discord moderator's dream setup, you should totally check out the channel's Discord by the way, the link is in the description. Hitting a button to move power around, and getting to the Legate's camp. This also wasn't very much fun, but without using stem packs or armor, I'd say I did impeccably. Given Walter's manipulative nature, I opted for the charisma ending and told the Legate to run along after popping a skill magazine. After watching Oliver fly off the dam, I proved that yes, you can beat Fallout New Vegas as Walter White on very hard and hardcore difficulty. This was a really long challenge, much longer than what I really thought it would be. Between getting to know all the factions and collecting all the ingredients to make Turbo, it was no easy task. A couple of things I learned from this run was that there was a vendor in Camp McCarran that sells a crap ton of items, and that the bartenders in Gamora are a great source of chems if you don't have the dead money DLC. It was definitely fun roleplaying a little bit and messing around with chem creation. With all that out of the way, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider leaving the like button more blue than the Play-Doh I used to make my first pocket pussy. Have a good one.